in the fam. All in the fam. Come on. It's all in the fam. All in the fam. Come on. Now get your hands up. 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 Hey guys, welcome to another week of Fam Fridays. I'm your host, Brianna Cherie, and Fam Fridays is every week at 6 p.m. on Instagram Live, where I talk relevant topics with a new guest each week. So if you didn't catch last week's episode with Diane Pedro, head over to YouTube, search All in the Fam, first subscribe and watch that episode. Last week, we talked about the Black Lives Matter movement and our experiences with racism in America. So go check that out. This week, I have my good friend Justin Kieta on the show. Today, we're going to be talking about the Enneagram personality test. And basically, we're going to go over our results and explain why our results match our personalities and how does that correlate with the decisions that we make and how does that affect our worldview. And then we're going to correlate that as well with the Black Lives Matter movement in America today. So I hope you enjoy this episode. We did have some technical difficulties filming this um, last Friday. So that's why we are on a Zoom call this time. So bear with the editing, but it's still good content, still a great conversation. So enjoy, guys. Peace. All right. What's up, Jess? How are you? Hey, Bree. How's it going? I'm, good. I'm doing good. 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 Awesome. So thank you for being on this episode of Fam Fridays. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to be a part of your podcast this week. Awesome, awesome. So I know we had this conversation before um, multiple times about the Enneagram. So I thought we should talk about it for Fam Fridays because I feel like it's the new craze right now. Everybody loves their zodiac signs, yes, but I feel like the mm. Enneagrams are more accurate. So, um, but first, I feel you. But first, um, introduce yourself. Tell us, tell us two fun facts. Yeah, sure. So I'm Jocelyn. I'm one of Bree's very good friends from high school. So we've known each other for quite some time now. Um, I live downtown in Chicago, and I work as a publicist at a public relations and marketing agency. And two fun facts about myself. Um, one is that I have a side hustle as a calligrapher. So I've taught myself how to do a lot of cool hand lettering and calligraphy, and I use that to create like wedding invitations and art for people. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And then another fun fact about me, which I think, Brie, this was your favorite fun fact that I had told you about ahead of time, uh, was that um, my favorite kitchen utensil. I feel like this is such a fun fact to share with people because I feel like people use it a lot for icebreakers and stuff, but my favorite kitchen utensil is chopsticks. I love eating food with chopsticks. I think they're so fun. And um, I've been on a little bit of like a dumpling craze recently. I love dumplings. So it's like the perfect food to eat with chopsticks. That, that's so true. You, you feature dumplings in the Instagram story quite often. <laughs> I know. I know. It really is just like, I don't know. It's that comfort food that I always come back to. It's one of my favorites. That's awesome. That's awesome. So calligraphy and chopsticks. Got it. Now I will only think of you as calligraphy <laughs> and chopsticks. Awesome. The only two things you need to know about me, right? <laughs> So can you tell the fam briefly, like, what is the Enneagram quiz and, like, explain, like, why you think it's more accurate than zodiac signs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So I feel like, well, to start, the Enneagram is an, a type of personality quiz. Um, and I feel like a lot of people resort to... Uh, look to the, the Zodiac to determine more about their personality. But I feel like the Enneagram has a little bit more psychology behind how they broke down these different personality types. And there are different ways that some of the other personalities can also influence your dominant personality traits. So, um, you know, as like a longtime lover of Zodiac signs and astrology, I feel like, um, I, I needed a change and like looking for something different with personality types because I just felt like Zodiac wasn't doing it for me anymore. Um, as a Scorpio, I just felt like there always was a lot of like 
negative good negativity and sadness around my uh sign and i was like you know what i don't think that's who i am as a person so i turned to enneagram and i feel like i was learning a lot more about myself and um What's cool about Enneagram is that it's really looking at your like worldview and your perspective and how um, that kind of like determines your personality that you put out to the world based off of your own perceptions of the world. So I think it has a better um, like worldview of who you are and your place within society as well. So I think that's why I'm drawn to it a little bit more and found a little bit more connection with it. Awesome. So what is your, so do you know your number? Did you retake the test? Yeah. So I actually like retook the test recently. Um, I originally was a type one, retook the test, still got type one. So she's here to stay. I'm a type <laughs> one, uh, which is classified as the reformer. Okay. And the interesting thing about Enneagram is that it has wings and the wings are usually like a second personality. Like it's basically whatever your second highest personality was that you scored on the quiz. So my main dominant personality is the type one, the reformer, but a second trait or personality of mine is the type two, which I recently learned is the helper. And when the type one and the type two come together, it usually makes more of that uh, personality type known as the advocate. So I am the advocate, which I feel like is actually a really good fit for me. You, like, you actually went more in depth because I just went, I just saw my number and I was like, bet that's it. I didn't think about the, the sub number that I could possibly be. Um, so wait, just briefly, I'm just going to read off to everybody what the nine types are. I'm not sure. going to give the descriptions, but the, the names are pretty self-explanatory. So if you're a type one, you're the reformer, so yourself. And then there is the type two, which is the helper. Type three, the achiever, which is myself. You have type four, the individualist. Type five, the investigator. Type six, the loyalist. Type seven, the enthusiast. Type eight, the challenger. And type nine, the peacemaker. So those of you watching, if you don't know your types based off what I just said, or based off the names I just said, there is a quiz. Um, honestly, you can just Google Enneagram test and you guys can figure out which, which number you are. So I'm a type three and that is the achiever. And with type three, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm super optimistic, efficient, energetic, goal-oriented, all the above. Um, but I think that's such a fit is, for you. Yeah. But I see that. <laughs> I feel like my sub number would also be the helper because I like to give and be selfless at the same time. But like when it comes to like personal goals and aspirations, you best believe I want to achieve it, but I still have a heart and you know, I want to give back and stuff like that. And so, yeah. That's so cool. I love, I can already tell that I would be as like a reformer. I would love to be the type of person to surround myself with achievers because I love being around those people that are very like motivated and goal oriented. Um, as you can guess from the name of the reformer or the advocate, um, the reformer is usually known as someone who is like very like ethical, has a strong sense of right and wrong. Um, they're well organized, but they want to be like teachers and crusaders and advocates for change. So, um, type ones are known for having like pretty high standards um but overall they have like a sense of mission and purpose that they are trying to achieve in the world so i feel like uh you know sometimes i feel like i can get caught up in myself between that moral divide and sense of right and wrong and trying to figure out those answers ahead of time before i'm crusading forward with the different uh platforms for advocacy that i want to work towards so i love being around achievers who are like those go-getters that are making all those goals. And it's like, no, we're moving on to the next step. This is how we're going to get this done. So I think that works perfectly for the both of us. It really does because we've been friends since what, junior year? And we honestly make a good friendship. So I think so too. I think like when we're working on stuff together, like it's going to get done, you know? So and we're I like as big as cheerleaders at the same time. 
Um, yeah, can you, I don't know if you could tell already just from this video. We're, we're <laughs> all, this have, here, like, all this positive energy and just feedback, we love to see it. So <laughs> let's, let's segue that. So you said that the Enneagram basically, it helps us, it, it correlates our personalities with how we view the world and how yes. we, you know, I don't know, set a path for ourselves in the world. So with everything going on in America with the Black Lives Matter movement, how would you say yourself as a reformer is approaching certain situations um, regarding racism or like what are you doing as a reformer with the with the movement if you are doing anything? Yeah, so as a reformer, um, I feel very called to act, to speak out um, and to educate myself. I feel like I see myself as someone that, you know, I am a white person in this society and I know that my voice can will be heard by other people if I speak up and have something to say. And I want to be that advocate that's using my voice as a platform to share truth, share the real experiences of my black and POC friends and to educate others as well about what I know about these communities and to help others at least understand by educating them with what, what I've heard from this population of people that is just not being regarded in the same way in our society. So, so far, um, I've participated in a few protests I've shared a lot of information on social media about how you can get involved, signed petitions, um, you know, shared, shared a lot of that type of information with my social media channels and also have gotten in some discourse and discussion with the fam and friends on social media platforms as well. But I feel like it's really important to step in and not be afraid to um, highlight areas where, you know, people are speaking out about this movement potentially in an incorrect way or in an uninformed way that really isn't bringing to light the true experiences of Black people in America. So, um, you know, it's really tough to have those conversations, but I feel like this is the time and place to do it. And it's, it's a time to be uncomfortable. Um, it's a time to learn. It's a time where I feel like we need to be accepting of um, each other's mistakes as well as we're all learning. You know, it's better to be speaking out for what you believe to be the right thing and potentially not saying everything correctly. People are going to be learning during this time and the, that's towards the path of eventually becoming a better society where everyone is going to be treated equally and we all will have this better understanding of race in America and those different inequalities that we have been systemically living with for so long that are have just they're bringing ahead to the surface now and it needs to it needs to move on <laughs> our society it's 2020 now it's time for our society to move on to something bigger and better than holding on to systemic racism wow I think you just gave like a whole dissertation <laughs> that, <you> know, <laughs> I'm over here just like uh-huh yep Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't get me started on this topic. I feel like I could keep going on and on. I love it. It's like just going back to like the Enneagrams and correlating that with the movement is so interesting to see the different type of people and the ways that they respond to the actions that they're taking within the movement. So yeah, the reformer in your role and then me as an achiever, you know, I like to set goals and be goal oriented. So something that I did with my friends, we set a fundraiser and we set, uh, you know, we set a date and we wanted this amount raised by this date. And um, that was something that, that kept me triggered in the goal, but it was for a good cause. And I guess that's also the, the helper in me where I just, I felt selfless and I wanted to give back and um, walk in a protest and cleaning up after riots and go in the food drives, just giving up my personal time for something that's bigger than me. Um, and then, I know there is, I don't know if you've seen Dave Chappelle, he came out with a special and I would assume he's an enthusiast because he's a comedian and he used his platform as a comedian to talk about 
all the shit going on right now. So it's just there's Very so cool. many there's so many different things that we can be doing to help the cause, and I just feel like there's no excuse for people to be like, you know what, I don't have a say because you do have a say no matter who you are, what your personality type. Like if you know that this is the right thing to do, you should do it, and whatever you need to do, get on the horse because. Like the fight for racism is going to be a battle and it takes all of us, honestly, to come together. So, yeah, I totally agree. And I think one thing that I've seen on social media a lot is like this phrase that's along the lines of um, this is a moment in history. Make sure you are on the right side of it. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people that are standing up for this movement right now, I know a lot of people that are very candidly involved with it but i hope that these people truly are involved for the right reasons because they truly want to see this type of progress in america not just because it's the right belief or like the right side to be on but that they truly believe that within themselves that they want to see that level of equality they want to look across a room and see a person of every different type of race and ethnicity represented in that room um I feel like that's like my goal for the future. And what I've always wanted is to see more representation and more diversity, because I know that even as a white person, I know that it will make me a stronger and better person in society, contributing to society by surrounding myself with people of different backgrounds and experiences than myself. Yeah. Like I mentioned in the, in the first, I think, I don't know if it was the first Fan Friday or one of the episodes that I posted, but I said, like, right now, we are not the United States of America. We're just the states at this point because we're so divided. But I love how we outnumber the racists and, like, the KKK rallies. Like, you see millions of people protest these past two weeks, and it's just such a beautiful thing. And we can only go up from here as a country, and I love to see it. I totally agree with you, Bree, and I think that the – the movements we're seeing across the country and even the world really make a call for substantial action from our federal government. You know, it's, it's heartwarming to see the way that people are coming together in these different states. And I really hope that this doesn't become like a state by state type of situation, but that we really see this overall radical change across the entire country coming from our federal government. So uh, you know, I think that's the dream. And that's something that it's, it's crazy that we're talking about this in 2020, that this isn't something that has been implemented already. If there were any year for it to happen, I think 2020 would be a great year because it's been a crazy year so far. So I'm really looking forward for some good news to come down the pipeline from all the hard work that all of us are putting into this. Great. Well, Jess, I think we should conclude on that. I love all the input you gave. It was so awesome to talk to you. Yes. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It's so nice to talk to you. And I love learning more about your Enneagram as well. (laughs) Awesome. All right, Jess, stay safe out there in the city. Love you, girl. Yep. See ya.